Director of International Relations and Development at the Hotline for Refugees and Migrants, Tamara Newman, joins me in studio for further insight. Tamara, great to have you with us. Thank you. Now, a similar offer was made to African migrants living in Israel, more so in the form of an ultimatum. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll pay you to go home or you'll face jail. Now, critics of that kind of a policy are calling it inhumane. What do you say to that? Uh, I think it's definitely inhumane depending on the conditions that those people are going to find back in the countries uh, where they came from. Uh, in the Israeli context it didn't really matter where they had come from and it was applied to people such as those from Sudan and Eritrea who are the majority of people here who actually fled persecution and therefore should be protected both under international uh, law, the UN Refugee Convention and morally because we know that many of the people who were returned there faced great danger and mm. some of them even Death. When you compare, say, the policy that's being applied in Germany to the one that's being applied in Israel, Israel's is claiming that these are economic migrants, and those are the same kind of migrants that the German uh, government is targeting, economic migrants, not those who have fled from war and going back to dangerous situations. So how do you compare the policies and how they're being applied in two different countries? Yeah, well, I think the key difference is that Germany operates what's called a real refugee status determination system where people can apply and they go through an interview process, and then when they... Uh, uh, if, if they're found to be someone who has fled persecution, they are given a uh, refugee status. Um, Israel's system is, doesn't operate functionally. Of 36,000 Sudanese and Eritreans in the country, there are about 12 who have been recognised as refugees, mm. whereas in countries, um, the average across Europe for recognition of Eritreans, it's mm. above... 90% compared to 1% in Israel. So you can hear from those statistics that there isn't that same system in place. What we have here is a system set up in order to reject people, uh, despite the fact that there is extensive research and, and statistics of their receiving refugee status in other parts of the world that says to us, we know these people are actually refugees. So you're saying that the system in Israel is intentionally flawed? Yes. Can you explain to us why that might be? Uh, yeah, uh, sure. Um, the, the system is basically set up in order first to check the, the uh, applications of people who can be deported, which is often not, not people who are uh, from Sudan and Eritrea. Uh, so the, 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 they go through the applications of people who they can deport um, and then sort of claim that they can't deport Sudanese and Eritreans because they haven't checked the asylum application. Is, it, is this linked to the uh, attempt to maintain the integrity of a Jewish majority in Israel? Is that, I'm just trying to understand, why there would be an intentionally flawed system. I think there are definitely statements that have come out of the government to say that it is about um, the Jewish demographic makeup of the state, but the statistics don't support that. I mean, the Sudanese and Eritreans who earlier this year, the government uh, invested a lot of money in trying to deport them, made up less than half of 1% of the population, which isn't really a threat to the Jewish demography of the state at all. All right, so what would attract an asylum seeker to accept an offer like the ones that either Germany or the Israeli government is uh, offering to them? Well, I think in Germany, I think the people who will accept it are people who migrated for economic reasons and therefore um, will choose to go back with an economic incentive. The people who won't work for are people who fled persecution and, and will face danger even if they might have some money, which is more reflective of the, the situation of Eritreans and Sudanese in Israel. Um, in Israel, some people have left, but it was under a real uh, uh, duress, which was the um, establishment of the Hulot detention centre which mm. in, uh, detained people indefinitely and more recently something called the uh, deposit law which robbed people of 20% uh, of their salaries which is still in place now which is forcing people into into poverty um, mm. and dire poverty at that. A lot more certainly needs to be done to help these people who have certainly risked their lives in order to save their lives and find themselves in a in a better country. Yeah absolutely if there was a real system in place to check people's status and award status to those who indeed fled persecution, we would be in a much better position.